Hello, my beautiful friends, Christina here, and I am so happy to be here with you for a very intimate video today. We're gonna to be talking about my weight, and we're also gonna be talking about why I threw out my scale. This was one of the best things that I could have ever done for my mental health, and it actually gave me the confidence to truly be myself. We are going to be diving deep in this video, and I'm sure it's going to become a little bit uncomfortable at times. How much do I weigh? Why I threw out my scale? And why this was so good for my mental health? So I'm sure many of you want me to give you an exact number of how much I weigh, and I'm gonna be very honest with you. I actually don't know. I have literally not weighed myself since I was about 19 or 20 years old. Can you believe that? And I'm gonna tell you why. Um, but for the sake of giving you what you want, I will probably share with you an estimate. I'm going to guess that I'm between, I wanna say 125 and 135. Now, I could be very off here, but I'll say this. At the heaviest I've ever been, I was 145. And I know that for a fact. And the lowest weight I've ever been at was 87 pounds. And that was when I was absolutely at my sickest, when I was 18 years old in the hospital, overcoming from type two diabetes and hyperglycemia and very sick. So I'm almost 5'7". So you guys can imagine that me at 87 pounds at the time was emaciated. I'm gonna show a few pictures here on the screen just so you can get an idea of what I've looked like in the past. And also some pictures of what I look like now. It is a bit vulnerable for me to share some of these past pictures with you, but I have to say, they don't affect me like they used to. And I've made peace with my past and I'm proud of myself for how far I've come, no matter whether I'm looking at these pictures or not. I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life right now and I have done so much work to love my body, no matter how much I weigh or what shape I'm in. And I feel like that's a part of the true work of learning how to love yourself and a part of the process of self-care. I've been both ends of the spectrum here. So for those of you who are struggling with weight, I hope that you really do hear me out when I share what I'm about to share with you because I really can relate to you. I very much do understand. Weight is a sensitive topic for so many because there are people who will judge or criticize us solely based on our looks and it's not always fair, it's not easy, and I know that it makes us self-conscious and it strips us of our confidence, but it shouldn't, and let me tell you why. I grew up a perfectionist, type A personality, I cross every T, I dot every I, and I still am a perfectionist to this day, I'm just way more compassionate with myself and I've done a lot of inner work to find peace with myself in that way. And as you can imagine for perfectionists, numbers matter, right? And when I first began this journey, um, I know that I was extremely skinny, but I had this ideal in my mind of what perfection looked like for me. If I could only look like that girl on the model, if I could only reach this certain number, people would love me. If I could only get an A on that test, then maybe people would accept me. Maybe I'll get into that college. Maybe I'll be good enough. I really believe if you go back into your past and if you start looking at certain case scenarios with friends or family, you might find certain things that trigger you or might trigger the way you see yourself today. Things that make you feel good enough or not good enough. And I believe that those experiences shape how you deal with circumstances now and might even affect how much you love or care for yourself now. It took me a while to sink into this first point, so I'm just gonna say it. Your weight is not a barometer for success or happiness. Those numbers on the scale are not a reflection of how happy you will be or how successful you will be if you reach that number. You can reach that number and still not be happy because happiness is an inside job. And to be honest with you, there were many times where I would try and be the exact same weight as the model that was in those magazines. And I thought, well, if I'm the same weight as her, I'm gonna be happy because I'm gonna look like her, people will love and accept me, and guess what? I'd get to that weight, nothing changed. I still felt the same about myself, 
And the problem was, I didn't love or accept myself. And therefore, because I was basing my happiness on that number, I wasn't finding happiness within. And this brings me into my second point, which is weighing yourself frequently or repeatedly can breed an obsession and an unhealthy obsession because it can become a distraction from what's actually bothering you. And this very much applies to mental health and not just with weight, but if you look at society right now, we live in a world where people will do anything to numb themselves. They will stuff themselves to avoid feeling. They will hurt themselves to avoid feeling pain. People will do anything to avoid feeling pain, whether it's overeating, undereating, using drugs, drinking alcohol, uh, obsessing about certain things. Like, I mean, the list goes on and obviously there are various severities to each one of these, right? They're different extremes. Some might not be considered extreme, some might. Um, I believe that repetitively weighing yourself and becoming obsessed with this isn't good for your mental health. And I found myself weighing myself repeatedly, right? Because for whatever reason that day, I couldn't focus on my illness or I couldn't focus on family issues that I was having or I couldn't focus on, I remember at the time when I first went raw, I lost one of my best friends to a drug overdose. And instead of focusing on that, I focused on how much I weighed every day because somehow that made it okay. It makes no sense, but to those of you who have experienced uh, repetitive, repetitive weighing of yourself, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, it can become a distraction from what's really bothering you in life. But if you throw away the scale and you replace it with, here's what I'm actually going through today. Here's the real emotional problem at hand. How can I work through this and heal? You're in a whole different ball game now, a whole different ball game now. You actually are bringing the ability to have real healing come into the picture. Numbers do not equal validation. Being a specific weight will not make you more lovable, won't make you more accepted by society. Numbers don't equal validation. You might think that when you get to that place, everything will be better and that all your problems will go away. But that's not how your problems go away. If you're dealing with a specific health issue, it's a bit different. You might need to lose weight to have better health. And in this case, I'm not referring to you. I'm specifically talking about um, people, individuals who, who might be in this pattern of, of unhealthy thinking about their weight and if they're not good enough, or maybe even uh, those who have eating disorders who are struggling with that. I do not take it lightly. It's a very serious topic. I think I began to fall more into this mindset of self-love as soon as I realized that everyone is shaped differently. We're all different heights and shapes and uh, sizes and personalities and we all have so many unique traits that make us who we are. No one person is going to look exactly the same. No one person is going to be shaped the same or weigh the same. <laughs> you might wanna look like that model in the magazine but she might be a different height than you. Her hips might be bigger or smaller. She might have a different color hair. The truth is, is that you can only achieve self-love when you look in the mirror and you start really loving every dimple, every curve, every shape, every single bit about you. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, comparison is the thief of joy, right? And it's when we begin to compare ourselves with others we forget what we have that makes us so incredible. You're not meant to be like somebody else. You're meant to be like yourself because those were the gifts that you were given. And if you can start thinking of yourself as a gift and everything that makes you up as a gift, I think you'll start to love yourself even more. I truly believe that deep down, everybody loves themselves. I truly do. I know there's a lot of self-hate out there. But if you think about it, your heart beats for you unconditionally so many times a day without you asking it to. 
Your body keeps you alive. This shell that you're in keeps you alive. That's, that's self-love, right? <laughs> so why wouldn't you give that love back to your body? Not only by being kind to it with your thoughts, but also by feeding it well and taking care of it, getting in daily exercise, spending time in nature, practicing positive affirmations and so many good things. There's no such thing as perfection. Am I right here? I truly believe that we are perfect already as we are. And for some of us like me, you might have been through a weight loss journey or a weight gain journey. You're still perfect. You're still perfect just as you are. It doesn't mean that it's not okay to have goals or to try and reach those goals. By all means, reach those goals. Try and achieve the best level of health that you want to be at. I think there's a fine line there between confidence, appreciating who you are, trying to be in the best shape, being healthy, versus having it become a negative obsession, participating in degrading self-talk, putting yourself down, uh, participating in self-sabotage or self-abuse. As you can see, these are two very different things, and I hope I'm making it clear here. If I am, please let me know in the comments because I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. And I've heard many stories from people who will weigh themselves on different days with different scales and the numbers are completely different. Scales aren't always accurate and sometimes different scales will give you different numbers. I'm sure you've experienced that to some degree. And in a way, I kind of feel like that's also another reason why a number on a scale doesn't validate you in a certain way. And for those who might be upset by a few different numbers changing or by small or large fluctuations, think about how that can greatly affect your mood. Because at that point, you're allowing the numbers on a scale to greatly affect your mood. Imagine if you're having a great day and all of a sudden you get on the scale and then all of a sudden what? You allow those numbers to just make your day go totally down the toilet. Is that justified? Not to mention, muscle weighs more than fat. You can be very muscular and very toned and lean and way more than somebody who might appear to be heavier set or might not be as toned or lean because muscle weighs more than fat. It's just not accurate as to what you look like. So the numbers on the scale don't actually determine if you look good or not, right? So I just wanna be super clear about that. I'm sure many of you also deal with family pressure as well. To be the best, look the best, uh, represent your family in the best of ways, or maybe you have you know, certain people who are in your family who will judge or critique you for not just looking a certain way, but for being you. And I do believe at points we take it out on our weight because it's the one thing that we can control. Do I think that that's healthy? No. I think there are much healthier ways to deal with emotional trauma. I love the book by Marshall Rosenberg, Nonviolent Communication. It really helped me to work through what I'm feeling, what needs of mine aren't being met, and how to meet those needs. It's interesting, once I started doing that inner work, I didn't really care what my weight was because I found joy and I found peace within myself. So it all boils down to this. I threw away my scale because it wasn't good for my mental health. The second I got rid of my scale, I stopped focusing on those numbers. I stopped giving myself worthiness from those numbers and I began to take care of my body and listen to my body in a way that I never had before. I focused on health and healing. I woke up every morning, I journaled, and I focused on how I was feeling and I let that be the barometer for how I wanted to move forward that day. It is not always easy to do this, right? It's not the easy route, it's not the easy path, but I believe sometimes that the path to true healing never is. When I threw away my skill, I believe I gave myself permission to have confidence and confidence in a different way, right? It was almost like freedom. I'm gonna love myself no matter what doesn't matter what anybody else thinks, I'm gonna shine as me. I'm just gonna do the best that I can to love and take care of myself. And I really believe that this allowed me to shine brighter. And not letting that dictate <laughs> how 
I felt about myself. There are gonna be days when you wake up heavier or thinner or more puffy or more bloated. We're human. We're never gonna be the same number all of the time. And it's about being gentle with yourself and being compassionate with yourself and meeting your needs, right? There might be times where you need to set aside some time to really take care of yourself and practice self-care. And there might be some times where you're like, you know what, I can stretch the envelope a little bit. I can go hard on my fitness. I'm gonna do this the best that I can. I feel like I am in the best shape of my life. I don't care what I weigh. It matters how I feel. And you know what? <laughs> Me putting in the work to do that, I feel like I look the best that I ever have. And me doing the work shows. And I truly believe that not all of that is reflected in my physical form. It's not always reflected in your physical form. Confidence isn't just about what you look like. It's about how you act or react or carry yourself in front of people. That's confidence. We all have the ability to glow from the inside out. It doesn't just start with your weight. It starts from within. It starts from you doing the inner work. We've covered a lot of stuff here and honestly, this topic could go on forever. And I, I genuinely hope that this message is well received. And I understand that this topic is not going to apply to everybody. This, this topic might hit some of you hard and some of you might just skim over this video and think, hey, it doesn't matter. Cool, she shared her thoughts on this. This is not a generalized video. It doesn't apply to everybody. So for those of you who would like to take what you can and maybe use some of these tips or tools. And I just, I just hope that for those of you who need to hear this message, it helps you in some way. It's been over a decade since I've weighed myself and I've never felt happier about that decision. Now, am I recommending for everybody here to go and throw out your scale? Not necessarily. I invite you to do what's best for you. And maybe if you do weigh yourself every day and you find that it doesn't make you feel as good about yourself as you'd like, maybe just think twice about this video. Okay, maybe I only wanna weigh myself once a week, but maybe I won't let it affect me as much emotionally or mentally. And for those of you who really struggle with this, I'll just suggest a few things. Something that really helped me were affirmations getting up every morning, getting naked, looking at myself in a mirror, and anytime there was a part of my body that I didn't like, I just looked at it and I said, I love you. And sometimes I just look in my eyes and a couple times just say, I love you, I love you, I love you. Love the parts of yourself that you think are imperfect and I promise you'll find peace. You'll start to love yourself. I think that's where it begins. And you guys know I've been a raw vegan for 14 years now and I really do believe that Diet, exercise, taking care of yourself in as many ways, shapes, and form is all a part of self-care. It all affects how you love yourself, right? Because those are actions of self-care that shows I show my body I love it by feeding it good foods, treating it well, getting enough sleep, etc. So in the vegan bundle as well, there is an e-course called Spirit Has No Size. And for those of you who get this bundle, which I hope you do, take advantage of this course because it is amazing for those who are looking to have more self-confidence and who are learning to love their bodies on a deeper level. If you liked this topic, please let me know in the comments below. If you want me to make more videos like this, I'd be happy to. Talking about body love is a huge passion of mine and I feel like I've had a long journey with this and I'm at peace with where I am now and so I'm happy to help those who need it. So yeah, I'm, I'm grateful and happy to have you here. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and please take advantage of the vegan bundle that I talked about earlier in this video, 90 eBooks for $50, plus my personal eBook and my retreat spot giveaway, plus airfare for using my specific link. I wanna say I appreciate you so much and thank you. And yeah, just sending you all my hugs and my love and I can't wait to see you in my next video.